Today is the day of Pentecost, commonly called Good Sunday, and we celebrate the birthday of the church. When, upon this, on this day, there were 3,000 people, souls converted unto the Lord by the preaching of the apostles and by the coming down of the Holy Spirit. It is this feast that is very essential to our church because after the Lord ascended into heaven, he gave us the Holy Comforter to be with us, to strengthen us, to guide us, to lead us. For 2022 years, the church, Christ Church, has been on this path of uh, winning souls for the Lord, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ to the Lord. So today is a very, very special day for the church. And as it is the first, uh, also the first Sunday of uh, the month, we examine ourselves by the Decalogue, found on page 29 in this uh, little mislet that will guide us through. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us, incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth, thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. We turn to page 8, the summary of the law. This is what will ultimately get us to heaven. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ has arise and give glory to the Lord by singing the Gloria. Glory be to God on high, and on earth be his goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee. Oh, Lord, the only begotten 
Here beginneth the first verse of the second chapter of Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as if a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, <clears throat> devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea, and Cappadocia and Pontus, in Asia, and Phrygia, and Pamphylia in Egypt, and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene, the strangers of Rome, Jews, proselytes, Cretes, and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. Here endeth the epistle.
continuation of the Holy Gospel according to Saint John. Glory to the Lord. Jesus said unto his disciples, If ye love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless, I will come to you, yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more, but ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments, and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and that he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Judas said unto him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself? unto us, and not unto the world. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, 
I go away and come again unto you. If ye love me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you, before it come to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you. For the prince of this world cometh, and hath nothing in me. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Let us renew our faith in the living God by turning to page 11 in the Missalet, page 11. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us in the Pontius Pilate. Suffered and was buried. On the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sermon hymn number 217, the first tune, Veni Creator.
thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Please be seated. I want us to turn to the bulletin cover and take a look at that. The apostles were instructed to, to stay put in Jerusalem until the Holy Comforter descended upon them. And we see the fulfillment of the promise of Christ, the descent of the Holy Spirit in cloven tongues of fire upon everyone gathered. You see the symbol of it uh, in the red that is all around us, a symbol of fire of the Holy Spirit. And even this mitre that a bishop wears, you can see the cloven tongue of fire. Everything is symbolic, pointing unto the gift of the Holy Spirit that gave birth to the church today, 2022 years ago. The fulfillment of this, our Lord's promise, forms the epistle for today. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. The epistle to the Hebrews best describes this day of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost, that 50th day after the Paschal Lamb was slain, when the law was given out from Mount Sinai, written on the stony tablets, for now the better law of the Spirit was, by the finger of God, to be written on the heart when they had come to the heavenly Mount Zion on the 50th day after the true Passover, which is Jesus Christ himself. The precious ointment poured upon the head, as the psalmist would say, was about to descend to the skirts of his clothing, for all was union. They were with one accord in one place, the one place and one mind setting forth the Holy Catholic Church and the communion of saints to which the Spirit is promised. The Holy Catholic Church. Catholic would mean that which is accepted everywhere by all. A true universal faith that was born of one heart and one mind. It is sad to see the church today with so many divisions over the centuries, beginning with the 10th century and the Great Schism, and that also over the wording that was in the Nicene Creed that we just proclaimed about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit proceeded from the Father and, quote-unquote, the Son. That was the cause of the controversy where the church split into East and West and the Son, Filio, Son, K, and, and the Son. It is the same Holy Spirit who has been guiding the church throughout and keeps us going forever, preaching God's word. For the apostles' story testifies, while the days of Pentecost were fulfilled and all the disciples were together in the same place, there occurred suddenly from heaven a sound as of a violent wind coming and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Imagine the city of London, or the city of New York, where diverse nations, people from diverse nations, diverse tongues are all gathered together, and the apostles are preaching, and as they speak, each of them is able to understand in his her, or own, her own language. And that is the abundance of the gift of the Holy Spirit. That is the miracle of Pentecost, where God's word was heard in each and every one's tongue. One of the fathers of the church says, Oh, how swift are the words of wisdom. And where God is the master, how quickly is what is taught learnt. No interpretation is required for understanding, no practice for using, 
no time for studying, but the spirit of truth blowing where he wills, as the Lord says, tell me where the wind blows. Tell me how the wind blows or where it goes. So is with the spirit Jesus would say, would tell Nicodemus in John chapter 3. The spirit of truth blowing where he wills. The language is peculiar to each nation become common property in the mouth of the church. And therefore from that day the trumpet of the gospel preaching has sounded loud. From that day the showers of gracious gifts, the rivers of blessings have watered every desert and all the dry land, referring to the soul, since to renew the face of the earth, the Spirit of God moved over the waters, and to drive away the old darkness, flashes of new light shone forth. When the blaze of those busy tongues was kindled, the Lord's bright word and fervent eloquence in which to arouse the understanding and to consume sin, there lay both a capacity of enlightenment and a power of burning. Father Melville Scott, one of the fathers of the Oxford movement, comments, the gift came as fire, which should warm the cold and chilly heart, should lighten men's darkness, soften the human being's hardness, burn away the human's dross, and kindle the dead matter of the world into heavenly flame. Yes, the Holy Spirit came to set the hearts of all on flame. So much so, the disciples on the way to Emmaus, as Christ spoke to them, revealing to them what the Son of Man should undergo after he suffered death, that he should be buried on the third day he will rise again. As they were talking, they were telling, they had come to remember, they remember the words of Christ and said, were not our hearts burning within us as he spoke, as Jesus spoke? He came one fire for all, for there is one spirit and one body, but he came as fire distributing itself so that it sat upon each and every one of them. For though given to the whole body, he is given to every member of the same for his or her vocation and ministry, dividing each person severally as he will. There is one fire, but many tongues, many tongues, but one fire. He came as tongues to persuade, not to force, as tongues of fire, for he persuades not by human eloquence, but by divine inspiration. According to St. Gregory of Nazianzen, life, the Holy Spirit is the life and life giver. So come to the life giver. He is the light and light giver. He is absolute good and spring of goodness. The right, the princely spirit, the Lord, the sender, the separator, builder of his own temple, leading, working as he wills, distributing his own gifts, the spirit of adoption. You and I were made God's children through our baptism as adopted children of our Heavenly Father, whereby with the power of the Holy Spirit, we are able to call God Abba, Father. He is the spirit of wisdom. He is the spirit of understanding. He is the spirit of knowledge. He is the spirit of godliness. He is the spirit of counsel, advice. He is the spirit of fear which are ascribed to him, by whom the Father is known and the Son is glorified, and by whom alone he is known. One class, one service, one worship, one power, one perfection, one sanctification. Yes, it is the Holy Spirit that wants to make us all holy because God is holy. And that is why it is called, I believe, in one holy Catholic Church, not because the church is perfect. No, it is so imperfect that today you can tell every church by its own falls how the church has crumbled, how the church is so much dispirited, if you will, gone away from the spirit of the living Christ 
and preaching their own gospel, adopting to the whims and fancies of the world that, that, that has to offer, otherwise you'll be discounted. We'll see that. <coughs> Churches have gone astray, fallen away from the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I have yet many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now, as he told in John chapter 15. But when he, the spirit of truth, shall have come, he shall guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak for himself, but whatsoever he shall have heard, he shall speak and shall announce things to come unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and shall announce it to you. Accordingly, there are not some things that are of the fathers and other sons, the other of the Holy Spirit, but all things whatsoever the father hath, father has, the son also has, and the Holy Spirit also has. Nor was there ever a time when this communion did not exist, because with them to have all things is to always exist. In them let no times, no grades, no differences be imagined. And if no one can explain what that which is true concerning God, let no one dare to assert what is not true. Yes, the union between God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit is a mystery. And it is a love that exists between all three of them that is beginning to uh, come into force on the birthday of the church. St. Paul says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any person has not the spirit of Christ, that person is none of his. The power and the presence the counsel, the wisdom, the understanding, the knowledge, the fear of God, and the true devotion, the strength. Holy Spirit is He. Let us invoke Him in our personal life. We may ask today, what is my relationship? What is our relationship with God, the Holy Spirit, when we can go to Him, most perfect, highest gift from God the Father? Do we know him? Does he exist in us? These can be the questions. Yes. When God created the human being, he breathed his own spirit into us. And that breath of the spirit is what is sustaining the human living. When the breath goes, we almost say, he is passed on, she is passed on, because they are no more alive. If we do not have the power of the Spirit of the living God in us, we may be dead, we may be the dead walking without life, not truly living our spiritual life. The Holy Spirit was given to us at the time of our creation, during the time of our redemption, during the time of our baptism when we were either babes or adults, that when we were baptized, when we were confirmed, and the Holy Spirit continues to come when two or three are gathered together in Jesus' name and pray, and he has continued to guide us. He is within you. He is a living soul inside you. And if only we could listen to him, talk to us. Remember the dominant thinking of our day is the gospel according to Oprah or the gospel according to Joel Alston. Sit in front of them or uh, Myers. We can listen to them and say and be comforted in what they say or look for comfort in what they say. This is their gospel. If it makes you feel good or feel good about yourself, how can it be wrong? If it makes you feel good, how can it be wrong? If it makes you feel bad, makes you sad, or makes you feel guilty, how can it be right? Yeah, don't let that guilt ride your life. It's too bad. Everything is okay. Anything okay, as long as you are happy. That is not the gospel according to Christ. Oh, be those who don't understand the difference. Nor is Christian holiness and Christ-like conduct 
the Christian faith and the Christian morality a matter of taking a poll to find out what most people think or accept today. What is most popular? What is cool? What is nice? What is good feeling? That's all matters. Go to the church. If you feel good in your heart, ah, fantastic. Go ahead. Do whatever you want. Never mind what you do. That is what some of the churches are preaching, which is totally wrong. That is not the gospel of Christ. It is not ruled by the public opinion. What today many people think on the social media about grace, about sin, about what not, about morality. Anything is okay. Everything is okay. You can kill. You can murder. You're okay. You can kill babies. That is also okay. And yet we are one nation under God begging, pleading for his mercy all the time. And yet, how true are we to what has been given to us, the faith that has been given to us, the conscience, the beating of the soul right within us? Just as we are real, so is a baby that is formed within the womb is real. How can we, how dare we kill that baby and simply say, you know, that is okay. Or you can extend it to any kind of a concept of a morality today. You can live anyhow you want, as long as you feel good about it, as long as you feel right about it. Why bother? There is no guilt. There is no sin. Everything is fun. Take it easy. You have only this world to live. All that matters is how you live today. And that's it. That is the philosophy of materialism, existentialism, that which is concerned about only here and now. But you and I are made for eternity. Even after this body dies and decays, there is the soul that is meant for everlasting life. You and I are created in the image and likeness of God, and that is the soul that is inside us. That is the soul inside every human being, and that is what will count on the last day. And therefore, we need to really work out our salvation with fear and trembling, with God's Holy Spirit being our guide. Living in the spirit of holiness is not comparative. We cannot compare so-and-so's holiness to me. Oh, I'm not like her. I'm not like him. And I need to be like him. Or I need to be like her. No, you need to be like Christ, who loved you and gave yourself for you. We, you need to be like Christ, who gave your sacrificial love for you so that he could die on the cross for you. That is the kind and extent of love that we need to have. Not the erotic love, not the sensual love, not the brotherly love that they speak of, but it is the agape love, that is self-sacrificing love. Less of myself, more of the others. That's why St. Francis would pray, of Jesus he would pray, it is in giving that we receive. It's in dying to our selfishness and self-centeredness that we are born to everlasting life. So when we think of holiness, it is not to measure in terms of others. What others do or don't do is not the issue. What you do does matter for your eternity. And therefore, what you would do is the crux of our living that matters eternally. I'm sure we all heard about it. If I'm repeating, I'll repeat it one more time. I'm sure you've heard of two evil brothers. They were rich and notoriously evil. One brother died and the other was determined to give him a proper funeral. The surviving brother approached the local priest and offered him $100,000 if he would preside at his departed brother's funeral and say that he was a saint. Now mind he was notorious. The priest, being an honorable man, declined saying, I couldn't say that for a million dollars. Your brother was a scoundrel. The brother approached the local rabbi and made the same offer. The rabbi was also a man of integrity. He said, I wouldn't say that for any amount of money, Everybody knows your brother was good for nothing. Finally, he approached the pastor of a small Bible church. He knew the church could use the money. He made the same offer. He would give the pastor $100,000. All he had to do was to say that his departed brother was a saint. 
the day came for the funeral. The pastor said all the appropriate things that he always said at such time. Just before benediction, however, he departed from the normal pattern and began to talk about the deceased. The pastor did not hold back. He was an evil man, he said. He cheated on his wife and abused his family. After going on this way for a considerable length of time, he paused and concluded, good to his word with. But compared to his brother, he was a saint. There is no comparison we can ever match. And there is only one comparison, Christ the Lord. How you and I live our lives as faithful disciples of Christ will alone matter eternally. And we are left as, not as orphans without a guide. The Holy Spirit is our guide and strength. In John chapter 14, for example, Jesus says, the Holy Spirit will comfort us when we are hurting. I will not leave you orphans, Jesus says, promising that the Spirit will bring us peace. Yes, the peace that we enjoy, it is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Jesus also says the Spirit will help us recall things we have learned about God. Whatever we learned in our Sunday school or catechism will bring forth to mind, always bringing us to remembrance, which also means the Spirit will help us when we tell others about our faith. In John chapter 16, Jesus refers to the Spirit as a counselor who will guide us in our everyday lives. It's interesting to know, Holly and I were walking down the Water Street. There is the church here on Water Street. And there is a counselor right there on Water Street. And also there is a police station in, on Water Street. Both the police stations and the counselor's office are busy. But you see where people should truly turn to for guidance, which is free that God gives is the church. Sadly, that is what is happening today. If only people would think of how much God loves us and how much he cares for us, they will turn to the church. Yes, the church is guided by a bunch of people who at times don't live up to the standard of Christ. And yet, every one of us is called to strive to maintain that faith and to keep it until the Son of Man returns. Jesus said, when the Son of Man returns, will, they, will he find enough faith on this earth? That is the duty of every church, to keep the faith alive. The way the Holy Spirit works in us is that when we commit sin, he will convict us of sin. He will tell us what you and I are doing is wrong and therefore come back to Jesus. Own up your sin, ask for forgiveness. Not as this world or the social constructivism would dictate that you can make up morality as you go along. Whatever you do is fine. Don't worry, there is nothing. All that matters is here and now as we reflect it. Dwell on that, live your life, enjoy, have fun, die, and that's it. If that was the case, Jesus wouldn't have come to this earth to save us from sin. He wouldn't have promised us heaven. And as he said, there are many mansions in my father's house. And he wouldn't have sent the Holy Spirit to guide us so that the Holy Spirit will help us in our faith, in our growth of faith until his second coming again, when he will claim us all unto himself. But there will be a judgment. He will certainly come and he will divide the goats from the sheep, the good from the bad. And he will tell those who are on his right hand, will say, Come ye blessed of my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. And then he will tell those who are on his left, I do not know you. And he will uh, reject them forever. The acceptance and the rejection of God's invitation is very uh, important for us. It is either damnation or salvation. And the Holy Spirit has been given to us immensely. And Jesus said, all the sins will be forgiven except the sin against the Holy Spirit. So Holly and I were having this discussion. 
She was asking, what, what is exactly that means? It is the blasphemy and the rejection of the offer of salvation that the Holy Spirit gives to us. That is what is an unforgivable sin. Yes, the Spirit of the living God has been poured upon us. As Prophet Joel prophesied on the day of Pentecost, it came down upon everybody. It is still continuing and operating in the church. We can see miracles in this very church where prayers are being heard by the Lord and answered, where people are being healed. We can experience that. The Spirit of the living God is very much here. And yet, there is a human will, ultimately, which will accept or reject it. If it accepts it, well and good. Our salvation is sure thing. If it is rejected, then there is the embrace of the devil and his minions and what all he is going to tell us that uh, there is no sin, there is only fun, there is plenty of time on this earth. Take your time, enjoy your life, now mind about tomorrow and live for today. It is the spirit of the living God that convicts us of sin. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. For the flesh lusts against the spirit. We are facing this battle, unseen battle between our spirit, the Holy Spirit and the flesh. Now the works of the flesh in Galatians, St. Paul says, are revealed, which are these, adultery, sexual immorality, impurity, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, rage, selfishness, dissensions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, carousing, and the like. I warn you, as I previously warned you, St. Paul says, that those who do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So very clear. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control, Against such there is no law. Those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us walk also in the Spirit, St. Paul says. Let's not be conceited as other people would have us, provoking one another and envying one another. In Romans 8, St. Paul tells us the Spirit will help us to stop sinning and do the things that please after admonishing the church in Rome, St. Paul concludes in Romans 8, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship and daughtership. And by him we cry, Abba, Father, the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share his glory. St. Paul would call the church to the Corinth, in Corinth, to holiness. By his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites you himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said that two will become one flesh. But he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside his body. But he who sins sexually sins against one's own body. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You're not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body, St. Paul says. And therefore, as we pray today for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we pray that he may heal our wounds and renew our strength and pour his dew of mercy upon our dryness, wash the stains of guilt away, bend the stubborn heart and will, 
melt the frozen and warm the chill heart, guide the steps that go astray on the faithful who adore and confess him evermore that he will descend in his sevenfold gifts. Give us virtues, sure reward. Give us salvation. Give us joy that will never end. Shall we then align our lives with that of the Holy Spirit, which promises joy in this present world and everlasting joy to come. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with thee and with thy spirit. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, so he said, it is blessed to give than to receive. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father, which is in heaven. Amen. The Offertory.
is the death of come back home. And we are very delighted that you could be here. There are two birthdays here celebrating. Chris Harris celebrates his birthday. And also Dr. Steve. Can you hear me? Happy birthday to both of you. And may God bless you. And we'll be praying for you during this holy Eucharist. And a uh, hearty welcome to our guests. And we know that today is the birthday of the church. So happy birthday to the church. If we read further along in Acts chapter 2, verse 40 to 42, that the church, when the church worshiped us, that they listened to the preaching of God's word, to the teachings of the apostles, to the breaking of bread, and the prayer and fellowship. That is, in essence, the worship of the church that has gone on these many centuries. And that's what we continue to follow. And we do not make any change to how it has been structured as it was given to the apostles, the twelve apostles, each of them, and their own style. And uh, that's what we are uh, following the apostolic teaching as to how we need to worship. And therefore, everything that you see is coming from the tradition that we have received, inherited, so that we can receive, protect, and pass on to the future generations. Let's continue to keep our church in prayer that God may continue to bless us and uh, especially pray for all those who we, we have also promised our prayers to that we may open all up to the Lord for His healing mercies and His each one their experience of the divine healing. Brethren, pray that this my sacrifice in yours may be accepted to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord receive the sacrifice of my hands for the praise of your name. This is one of appreciation for the impact Kelly and the Lord in the choir for putting together the music so beautifully done and sung. And so God bless them also. Let's pray for them as well. Purify us, we beseech thee, O Lord, by the offering of these gifts, and make us worthy to partake of all your things. Sanctify, we beseech thee, O Lord, the gifts which we offer, and cleanse our hearts by the light of thy Holy Spirit. Amen. The prayer for the whole state of Christ Church, found on page 16 in your Messalet. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostles has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks <clears throat> for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, deacons, and other ministers, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, 
sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We lift up to you, Lord, all the victims of war in Ukraine and all those in our country who have suffered this past week through violence at the hands of truly evil actors. And we pray also for Lucy Gomez, Kelly Eden, Mike Sneary, Dorothy Porter, Bill and Jane Graves, Margaret Gilbert, Jan Evans, Dear Heart, Good Pastor, Pete Flores, Matt Brandt, Sandy Bartlett, Carrie O'Neill, Barbara Parsons, Gary Johnson, <clears throat> Elizabeth Ehlers, Chris Harris, Sarah Parker, Nadine Pope, Reagan Frawley, Keith Hughes, DeCruz Michael, Kimberly Stroop, Tracy, Jared, and Jason Roach, Amy Joe, CJ, Colette and Marius, Pearl Rudd, Dr. Bruce Short, Dr. Hamza, Father Herman Hathaway, St. James, our diocese and our province. And we also bless <clears throat> thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, <clears throat> beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service and to give us grace <clears throat> so to follow their good examples that, they, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for Christ Jesus' sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. We also pray for those who are celebrating their birthday. Watch over thy children, Chris and Steve. O Lord, as their days increase, bless and guide them wherever they may be, keeping them unspotted from the world. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their heart may thy peace, which passeth all understanding, abide all the days of their life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of all Lord, Jesus, maker of all things, judge of all of men, we acknowledge and prevail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously encounter. I call good and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for the remembrance of the less grievous sent to us, the burden of the missing sorrow. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all that is bad, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve the news of life, to the honor and glory of our name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those with hearty repentance and true faith, turn unto him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. 
come full and simply in organness and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your heart. We give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, according to whose most true holy promise, the Holy Ghost came down as at this time from heaven, lighting upon the disciples to teach them and to lead them into all truth, giving them boldness with fervent zeal, constantly to preach the gospel unto all nations whereby we have been brought out of darkness and error into the clear light and true knowledge of thee and of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we Lord and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for the Thou of Thy tender mercy, this give Thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by His one oblation of Himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction, the sins of the whole world, and did institute in His holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of his death and passion 
and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he break them, break it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take he, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. My Lord, my God, my son. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as she shall drink it in remembrance of me. My Lord, my God, my Wherefore, Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy ideal beloved Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us from the Almighty goodness who have saved to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receive them according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we in all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, that we and all others who shall be partakers of this Holy Communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. Remember also, Lord, thy servants and handmaidens, who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. To these, O Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, we beseech thee to grant a place of refreshment, of light, and of peace. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom
world without end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with thee and with thy spirit. May this mingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ be unto us approaching. Let's sing the Lamb of God. receive the bread of heaven and call upon the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I am not worthy. O oh Lord, I am not worthy. O oh Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come my roof. But speak the word only, my soul shall be healed. What reward shall I give unto the Lord for all the benefits that he hath done unto me? O oh, the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord, which is Let the Lord Jesus Christ shall for me and preserve my body and soul until the rest of my life. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy, and thou shalt come around the world. But speak to the Lord of us, my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy, and thou shalt come around the world. But speak to the Lord of us, my soul shall be healed. Lord, I am not worthy, and thou shalt come around the world. But speak to the Lord of us, my soul shall be healed.
communion hymn number 204, 204. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting, hallelujah. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak the wonderful words of God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Cleanse our hearts, O Lord, by thy inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, and make them fruitful by the inward sprinkling of the dew of his grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. O Almighty God, who on the day of Pentecost did send thy Holy Ghost, the Comforter, to abide in thy church unto the end, bestow upon us and upon all thy faithful people his manifold gifts of grace, that with minds enlightened by his truth and hearts purified by his presence, 
We may day by day be strengthened with the power in the inward person through this Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with thee and the same Spirit liveth and reigneth one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with heart and peace. Thank you. Let us now bow in duty and serve with pleasing unto thee, O Holy Trinity. We are under the sacrifice of child, though unworthy. I will offer in the sight of thy divine majesty, and be provident for me and for all of them for whom I have offered it, a propitiation of thy loving kindness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this day and for, forevermore. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who hath made heaven and earth. And may the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, Keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God, Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, descend upon us and remain with us now, Lord. Amen. We proclaim the last gospel together, found on page 28. The Lord be with thee and with thy spirit. The beginning of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. The Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 1 following. Let's proclaim together. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shone in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through Him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighted every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, then gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we have beheld His glory, the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God. Before we sing the recessional hymn, one correction in my homily, I was saying on Warren Street, there is a counselor, there are counselors, and there are also attorneys. And that's what I meant to say, not the police station, there's only one police station. So, a lot of people going to, for advice, legal or any other advice to them, and therefore, how wonderful it would be to count on the Holy Spirit, who is always there, free, abundant, and eternal everlasting. Let us sing the last hymn in number 385, Glorious Strings of the Art Spoken. In number 385. <laughs>
keep us free from sin and protect us from all needless anxieties as we wait with joy for hope for the glorious and second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please do join us downstairs, hamburgers and hot dogs. Please join us for lunch. Thank you.